Do you use guitar amp sims? Do you have a problem with when you play a note, there is a delay between when you play that note and when you hear it coming out of the amp sim? That's called latency. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can minimize that latency to the point where it won't even be noticeable and it will be just like playing through a real guitar amp. So latency, what is it? You play a note on the guitar, but you don't hear that note coming out of the amp sim immediately. There's a short delay, typically of a few milliseconds, between when you play the note and when you hear it coming out of the amp sim. Now, ideally, what we want is to reduce that latency to zero, or at least to reduce it to the point where it's so small that the human ear doesn't even notice it. It can't be detected. Now, what can we do about latency? How can we control it? There are four factors that are under our control. One is the audio hardware, so the actual uh, physical electronics that is in your audio interface. Two are the audio drivers that that interface uses. Three is the buffer size that's a setting in those audio drivers that you can set. And four are the available computing resources that your computer has available to it when it's using an amp sim. So let's have a look at the audio hardware. With any uh, digital audio processing, with any digital processing at all, that processing takes some time. So there's always going to be a time between when the input signal um, goes into the electronics and comes out the other side, that electronics is going to take some time, milliseconds, to do its digital processing. That's where latency comes from. Now, audio interfaces these days are all pretty good in terms of the latency that they introduce, but it's always worth checking the specs for an audio interface if you're interested in buying one to see how much latency it does have. And there'll be a number typically in low milliseconds of how much uh, latency that audio interface will give you. Okay, number two, audio drivers. Audio drivers are little uh, pieces of low-level software that allow your operating system to talk to your audio hardware. It's very important that you use specific high-quality digital audio drivers that have been designed for high-end audio applications such as music production. Now, on Windows, there are something called ASIO, A-S-I-O drivers. I think that stands for something like audio system input output, but uh, I may be wrong there. On Mac, uh, there's something called Core Audio. I can't really talk about the specifics of Mac because I don't use a Mac. I'm a PC guy. Now, when you buy an audio interface, typically that will come with ASIO drivers, either on a physical disk, or they'll give you a link to the manufacturer's website where you can download them. And it's very important that you use those drivers. Now, let me show you BIOS FX here. This is my uh, amp sim of choice. If I go into the settings window and I pick audio settings, you can see I've got an option to select driver type here, and I've got Windows Audio Direct Sound and ASIO, I will always use the ASIO driver. That's the one that I installed when I bought my audio interface, which is a Focusrite Scarlett 6i6, if you're interested. If you don't see an ASIO option there, then what that probably means is you haven't installed the drivers for your interface, so I suggest you do that. If you use Windows Audio or Direct Sound, you're going to get nowhere near the performance and you're going to have probably a big problem with latency. Now let's move on to talking about buffer size. The audio drivers have what are called buffers in them. This is part of how they do their digital processing pipeline. Now they're important to us as their size is directly related to how much latency they introduce. And the way I want you to think about this is uh, the buffer size is a trade-off between audio quality and latency. So the higher, the bigger you set the buffer size, the better audio quality you will get, but the more latency will be introduced. So what we want, ideally, is to get the buffer size to give us decent quality but without introducing latency that becomes an issue for us. We want the lowest latency possible while still giving good sound quality. 
If we look at BiasFX's audio settings window again, we can see this audio buffer size setting currently set to 128 samples, which gives an, a, a latency of 2.9 milliseconds. Now, if I set that higher, then I would expect that latency number to go up. And if I set this lower, I would expect the latency number to go down. So what I want is to be able to keep a low latency while still having good sound quality. And the process that I suggest you follow for this is set the buffer size to say 128, play your guitar for a bit. If it sounds okay, you know, the quality is pretty good and you're not getting any noticeable latency. So the sound appears to be coming out of the amp sim the same time you're playing the note, you're good to go. You're finished there. If you're hearing any glitches or audio dropouts, then set the, sam the, the buffer size higher. So you'd set it to the next setting up, which might be what, I don't know, 160 or something here. And then do the same again, play your guitar, have the audio glitches and dropouts gone away. If they have, then great. And keep following that process. Keep playing your guitar. If it sounds okay and there are no audio glitches or dropouts, then you're good to go. If not, keep going up to the next setting until you get good sound quality with no noticeable latency. And the final thing I want to talk about is available computing resources. Now our computers these days, even when they appear to be idle, they are doing lots and lots of things in the background. We all know, we, we all use, you know, have 73 browser tabs open at the same time and, you know, we've got our email program and Netflix and, you know, maybe a game and, you know, computers can do lots of things at the same time. But the effect of that is, as the computer is using its resources, you know, its CPU time and its memory to do all those things, it means there are less of those resources available for the amp sim to use. Now, this could have a potential impact on latency in that if it increases the time for it to do its digital processing, then that's going to increase the delay between when you play a note and when you hear it. Now, in all honesty, this isn't really that much of a problem these days because computers have got so powerful that they can cope with the hell of a lot you throw at them. I haven't had a problem like this for, I don't know, 10, 15 years maybe. But if you do, there are a few things you can try. You can shut down all the applications that you're not actively using. You can disable Windows themes, which can be quite resource heavy, more resource heavy than you'd think. You can turn off file indexing. You can make sure that the power scheme you're using is a high performance one. And another thing not directly related to performance of the computer, but don't use long USB cables either. You know, connect your interface to your computer using quite a short run of cable. Now, this video has a companion article on the homemusiccreator.com website. On there, you've got a step-by-step -step guide to reducing the latency using amp sims and in a lot more detail than I go into in this video. Please go and check that out. You can find it at homemusiccreator.com forward slash latency. Thanks very much for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Now, go create some music. Cheers.